LK, as you might be able to tell, I'm in my favorite uh, office away from the office, Starbucks. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about resumes and um, letters of application. These are two documents that should complement each other. The resume follows the format that we've been talking about, which is lists, and the letter of application should be a par paragraph. Both of these are formal documents, and I can't stress enough how critical it is with these documents that they be as clean and as crisp and as correct as possible. Now, in terms of the resume, that means that the um, list itself clear, they're concise, there's enough white space, you don't want to fill it up too much, that um, there's consistency, right? even a small inconsistency, for instance, uh, using uh, spaces between bullets in one section and not using spaces in the next section, or capitalizing at the beginning uh, of one section and not at another section can be very distracting in a resume. Now, a couple of specifics about the resume. One of the things that, that a lot of people don't get is that the chronological order of a resume is in reverse. In other words, we're talking about your education and your job experience. You don't list the first job you had first, you list the last job you had first. If somebody surveying the resume or looking through the resume is interested in your best experience and your most useful experience. Same thing with your education. Nobody cares where you went to elementary school. They do care where you went to college, and they care what kind of grades you got, what kind of major you had in college. So you put those things first. A couple of odds and ends. If your education is uh, better than your experience, put education first. If experience is more impressive than your education, put your experience first. Uh, if you've got a good GPA, general GPA, put your GPA on there. If you don't, check and see if your GPA in the major is impressive. If it's not, don't put your GPA in there at all. Okay, don't put information on your resume that's going to hurt you. Now, about um, the letter, the cover letter. It's not intended to be a duplication of the resume. You'll notice in the instructions I said I want the resume first. That's because a resume should have all the pertinent information. It should have every detail. The cover letter should choose two or three, the ideal obviously is three, of your strongest points in the resume, and it should emphasize those. Not by simply repeating them, but by having something interesting to say about them. For instance, if you've got a good GPA, uh, you don't just simply say in your cover letter, uh, I did really well in school, my GPA is 3.3. You say things like, I worked very hard, and the fact that I work hard, I'm a hard worker, is illustrated by my GPA of 3.3, and so on. Don't try to cover too much in the letter. Keep it professional, keep it clean. Um, that's about all I can think of right now. If I do come up with anything else, I'll put a few notes on the cover page on Blackboard. But those are your two formal assignments next week, and I look forward to reading.